in the last match, but really a player I think IUPI will be relying on to do a lot in this game for them, both in the midfield and also getting forward. As we have kickoff starting underway, Notre Dame starting off with the ball. Sending it long way up to give a bath for. All called on Jack's side. This ball is kicked up there to the Irish, receiving it back and dropping it once more. Aka with the ball, sending it up to Gomez. Irish still, still in possession here, but Jaguars looking to make a good offensive push. Sends it in there and will be just wide of the post as Dowd will take the goal kick for the Fighting Irish. Very energetic start for the Jaguars. Not a nice switch of field, you know, and I'm interested to see how they line up because one of the things that defined this team last season was they didn't really play any one formation. They switched between a couple of looks, so much so that uh, in the pre, you know, the pregame talk, it was mentioned to us. One of the things that was most frequently said about this team was that coach players would come up to the or players, opposing managers would come up to the coach after the game and ask, you know, what were you guys doing out there? Because they switch so often, they're not committed to any one system. And I think that's something that they're going to look to kind of confuse this Irish team with. Who, you know, it's so much hard to prepare for a team that's only played one game. It makes it even harder when they're not fully committed to one way of playing. Getting back to there, playing it up to Russo. Russo trying to take it inside. And Ento sending it out to Rue, running and send, sending it back into the middle. Just a little bit of a ping pong there up in the front for the Irish. And it'll be the first corner of the game for the Irish. Some nice hustle all for, all for not right there by Correa, who uh, really did well to get to that ball, but in the end, just a half second too late as it did go out for a corner kick. You can't fault the lack of effort. KD Balfour taking the corner here for the Irish. Sending it short to Rue. And it'll come out to be a goal kick. Russo, I think, wanted a foul there, but I don't think the referee's ever going to give that, especially not in the first few minutes of the match. You know, it's a, it's a tight call. You know, there was definitely contact, but ultimately I think that's a little too little contact to get called in, you know, at least the opening stage of this game. We get taken out, but quickly intercepted. Kick it before taking it. Rue trying to get makes something happen in the box, but too many red shirts in front of him, and Morphew will pick it up in the goal. A little more energy for this Irish team. I think that first IUPUI chance kind of woke them up a little bit, let them know that this game's on. You know, this isn't a game that IUPUI IUPUI will be taking lightly and a game that Notre Dame will need to bring their best to to compete in. As the kick there from Moorfield gets sent in the Irish half, but once again, Bono this time taking it down for the Irish. But Avoya dishing it out wide. Bono with the ball taking it out. Again, Bakker stepping up. So we got Rue with the ball, sending it back out. Jack's doing a really good job of just sending back, pushing the Irish back as they try and work around. Yeah, you can't give up any easy goals in a game like this. And you gotta imagine that's priority one for the Jaguars to make sure Notre Dame can't get anything too easy. And that little bit of a defense there by Nieto. Just gets sent down. Now there's another corner for the Irish. Two corner kicks already within the first five minutes of the game. I know KK Baffle from the little set piece. That's how Notre Dame got their goal against Indiana. A dangerous ball into the box. Ended up in the back of the net when the Indiana keeper came out for it and just didn't clear it properly. Patty Burns got on the end of it. They're going to keep this one short. Through there with the ball just outside the box. Going to try and take a shot. There for Jags is McCoby. Once again, Irish is quickly intercepting the ball back. Ooh, a bit of a reach there by the Jags. Finnegan trying to get up to that ball, but it looked like his hand was going up there too for it. Irish trying to play quickly out of this as the Jags are scrambling to get back into the defensive position. Burns trying to stretch, stretch for the ball. Before sending it in. He's caught off sides. I think Ferguson's argument was actually he didn't touch it, I think he was saying, and just 
floated in its own, own accord, but regardless, Ferguson was indeed offside, and even if he didn't touch it, he was certainly in the line of sight of the keeper, so very hard to fault that call, but the linesman think he got that one right. Trying to pull really, really swell play there with Baffour's free kick. I think the goalkeeper was so confident that Notre Dame had multiple players offside, they didn't really bother making a play on it. Ultimately, turned out to be the right decision, though the ball ended up in the back of the net. Bryce Minot on the ball now, a player I'm really interested to see more for the Irish team. You know, they didn't have him against Indiana because of the red card he got in the last game of last season. You know, a player I think they're really relying to set the tempo from deep in the midfield in this game. Bono didn't play throughout the 2021 season due to injury. So this is kind of like a new season for him almost after playing that full season and freshman year and then not being able to play. Sophomore year. Actually, Notre Dame still has some injuries to mitigate. Ethan O'Brien still working his way back from an injury obtained last season. He's someone that you'd figure will be a pretty significant part of that midfield once he is fully healthy. But Notre Dame probably wanting to make sure he takes all the time possible to rehab, make sure he's fully ready once he comes back, not kind of half, you know, half into the game. There's Russo again with the ball, trying to take it through the midfield. There's Josh Ramsey once again sending it up to the Irish. And just over the head of Rue will give a throw in for the Jags. Notre Dame, gives, Notre Dame gives a lot of freedom to Ramsey in that center back role to make passes like that. You know, they trust his ability to distribute it from deep. You know, someone that can really hit a pass, as you saw there. Too much power on that one, but it certainly wasn't for lack of idea. And I think Notre Dame wants to open up this game against what looks to be a pretty deep block of IUPUI. He might be a key factor in that. Jags throwing once again intercepted. Irish have been just all over the possessions of the Jags. Jags haven't been able to get a possession. And it's Patty Burns there on the sideline. Ramsey looking to send the ball in, but it's deterred away by the Jags defense. See Notre Dame really working this ball from side to side here. So now we go down to the other side. It's about four in, playing, playing it into Enyo Ento, and it's a goal for Ento. What a run there by Ento, just getting free of the defender. Baffour looking up, seeing him in open space. Just one, two, and boom. First goal for the Irish. Such a cool finish by Eno Ento there. It's not an easy task, even though it looks easy, to get one-on-one -on -one from that angle and slot it home. All credit to KK Baffour for turning the goal and keeping his head up, seeing Ento make the run, and look at that finish. Gets it across the goalie into the corner. Real composed stuff there by a player. Notre Dame needs to be in composed in front of goal and have a breakout year if they want to really get back to the heights of that 2021 College Cup run. Interested now to see how IUPUI responds. It's very easy in the game's opening stages to kind of sit back and wait for it to come to you because you have all game to kind of open up. Now Notre Dame has gotten that first goal. You can't play for the draw anymore, although I'm sure they never were playing for the draw in the first place. I'm sure they wanted to come and win, but regardless, it does change the calculus of how you want to set up when the team gets a first goal that quickly. See what they do to respond. Until getting the goal, first goal on the board in tonight's game. You mentioned the response. I mean, we talk, if we talk about Notre Dame's game this past Thursday against Indiana, about four taking the ball, but He's get, it gets intercepted, tackled. And Gomez looking to make a run past Ferguson. Ferguson came back to the ball and getting it out of harm's way. The pressure for Gomez is going to be big to make sure this Irish back line stays harried. They don't get too complacent. Patty Burns coming up the left side. It's Bonu takes it once more. Getting played back to Ferguson. Ferguson just trying to surgically place these passes, just to get an open spot for the Irish. Patty Burns once again stretching the field, sending it in. And it'll be over the head of Russo. Russo fighting in the corner there with Braden Dyke. Excuse me, Braden Bacher. Russo taking a shot there. 
but blocked off by the Jags. And once more, another Irish, Irish offensive to turn off. What a run there by Russo, dancing and slicing, you know. It's hard to say that run deserved a goal per se, but it was certainly a lot of nice moves that very well could have led to a Sports Center top 10 type play if you were to put that home. But ultimately, nice work by the IUPUI defense to stay compact, keep it out of net. You know, one player went to ground, but other than that, nice work keeping the ball in front of them. Five four with another play, trying to find Ento again, almost in the same spot. Finnegan for the Jags, trying to fight, fight his way up. Into the, into the defense there of the Irish getting placed out of bounds. And those possessions are going to be important for IUPI. Rather, those sequences where Finnegan and Gomez are going to be relied on to keep on putting pressure on that back line, keep making sure that no ball gets in too easily. And you see there, when the pressure is applied at the right time, when they are able to reach that 50-50 ball in time, they can win a throw in and maybe start a possession of their own. And if you want to get back into this game, tie it back up, they're going to need to create those possessions, you know, in 50-50 situations. Gettenbacher with the ball, playing it up to Rue. As Russo takes it, playing it to Baffour. Baffour looking for Ento. Ento, once more free, gets a shot off, but blocked off by Moorfield. But this is, once again, the Irish are back up. Russo taking it. Baffour trying to get it wide to Patty Burns. Warren defending off Burns, forcing him back. Another ball sent in, Baffour with the ball, but just too heavy of a touch, lets Moorfield get another save. And check out the run by Baffour there, and especially to start off sequence as well, he is doing so well to find that little pocket in between the midfield line and the back line, that little half space area. Every time that he's wanted to get in that area, he's done so with you know, about 10 yards of space between him and the next defender. You gotta wonder what IUPUI is gonna do to counteract that in the future, because he is carving them up in that spot. See Gomez there trying to make Magic of his own, but Gennenbacher getting in there physically and fending him off. Billings with the ball, but once more, this is another counter by, by the Irish. Enno, Enno Ento in there. As the ball gets placed into the box, but once again, fended off by the Jags defense. It's been relentless from the Irish offensive so far. as the Jags will finally get some breathing room to try and develop an offensive of their own. As Haka plays it up wide right to Nieto, but it's called off sides, and the ball will once again be in the possession of the Irish. And a nice find, though, though off sides by Haka, going across the field and hitting that uh, man, though he was, of course, off sides. Um, we'll see here now, take a quick look at what happened there to create that sequence for Notre Dame. Just really nice reading the game by Bryce Pinot, a player that has a lot of good instincts in the midfield. That's what makes him so good in that deep lying role. Jumps that passing lane, takes off, and Notre Dame has a chance. Gotta imagine they're gonna wanna get more of those because that is a really high percentage chance and one that teams will want to take every time. Ferguson trying to play it up wide to Patty Burns. Burns in position, crossing it again into the box. Rue almost had a play on it, but unfortunately, not get it in. You talked a little bit Baffour just before about you know his ability to make runs. How about that off-ball run by Russo at the back post? Because even though that ball I don't think it was initially designed for him, he's able to make a play out of it. Now, can IUPUI get something here? Finnegan with the ball, trying to put some pressure on the Irish. Gomez looking to go in. But once more, fended off. This time by Bryce Manu again, getting his head on the ball and really intercepting that once dangerous Jacks play. Now Radovoya playing it out to bat for. Notre Dame choosing to sit back in that moment. What well, could have been a transitional because the problem for the Jaguars is, you know, once you commit so much to getting forward, you know, you had a couple bodies there, you got to get back quick and Notre Dame can create numbers in transition. That time they wanted to slow the ball down and create a more higher percentage chance in possession instead of as opposed to in transition. But you could see there were potential if Red Voice had turned forward and tried to go. You know, that numbers could have arisen if the if Notre Dame played their cards right. Or rather, if IUPY played their cards wrong. It's bad forward there, plays it to Burns. Burns looking in the middle for Ento. Thompson Roberts, Jaguar Center back, once again getting in the way of that connection. 
Burns really the fulcrum of Notre Dame's in-possession system. They like to push him high, so much so that in possession, it's more of a three at the back than a four at the back because Burns like to move up into what would more be accurately said as a wide midfielder role than a true fullback. And that's the reason why he's so dangerous on the crosses. He's so able to get to the end line and put dangerous balls into the middle. By four, sending it into the box corner near post. The Jags getting in front of that and getting it away. It's Braden Bakker trying to intercept that, but once more, Ferguson with the ball. Looking up, playing it around, passing it all the way back to mid midfield to Ramsey. It's interesting to see Notre Dame get more patient now that they have that first goal. They can be more willing to pick and choose when they want to try to go forward like they are doing just so now. Getting Bakker with the ball, just dishing it out. Through, through, ooh. A little bit of a shot there, trying to curl it right, right behind Moorefield. Crafty work by Kyle Gennenbacher, working his way forward from the fullback position. You know, not really a natural run for him. He's more of a traditionally, you know, in the Notre Dame system when Burns pushes forward, he's relied on to be more of a defensively stalwart fullback. That time he does well to do a give, a give, do a give and go, you know, make the run, find space, and not a bad effort either. Hits the side netting in the end, but, you know, put that one more foot to the left and you might have a goal in your hands. Kennebacher, of course, a very versatile player. Someone Notre Dame trusts to be in the midfield if needed, though in this new system they're playing with this year is probably going to be more of a fullback than he ever has been. Right, it's like, I mean, we talked to Coach Riley before, and he was talking about how a lot of the players, especially in the preseason, were having to be a little bit creative, get, get adjusted to possibly new positions on the field that they may not have, been, they may not have played of the year before. So it's a lot of roster gymnastics of finding which players work in the right roles and really fit into that Simpson to make the Notre Dame machine work. Yeah, one of the hallmarks of Notre Dame's tune-up games, at least the ones that we were able to watch, was the willingness to try to experiment and see, you know, players in new roles. You know, one of them, Patty Burns, playing as a center back, you know, couldn't really tell if that was maybe a makeshift role to try to, you know, get him some reps without having to do as high intensity work as he usually has to do in the Notre Dame system, or maybe because they wanted to try someone else at fullback. But, you know, that was just one of the many examples of Notre Dame kind of tinkering with how they want to line up, how they want to use players in and out of possession, and it's something that I think Notre Dame really values going forward when they want to change their scheme against different teams. Give teams something different to consider as that one is over hit. But I know they're trying to play it all the way back to Gennenbacher, but Gennenbacher just wasn't ready for it. Now that's going to set, just that little mistake is going to set up the first possession for a really good shot here for the Jags to try and capitalize off an Irish mistake. Corner kick coming up. These are the type of chances IUPUI is going to need to be able to, at the minimum, create good chances out of. You know, you don't want to not, you know, you obviously don't want to not take your chances, but... Something like this, when Notre Dame gives you a corner kick, a chance to put a high percentage ball in the box, you need to make sure those high percentage chances get converted. Aka sending it in, going f way far post. Getting sent back in, but Rue there to take it back out of the box and on the Irish set up once more. Felt like the Jaguars trying maybe a routine there where Haka goes to the back post and the ball gets floated across the middle, but I think there was just too much on that ball to effectively pull that off. But it's good to see IUPUI trying to get creative. They're not just trying to put it in the middle and hope someone knocks it in. They're coming with ideas. They're coming with ways maybe to break down this Notre Dame team that to this point has controlled the match so far. Sent ball there all the way from the back. Correa there trying to send it up to Finnegan. Just a little bit too hard and Dowd just collects it. Just a swap of the field here. So we're getting close almost to halfway through the first half here. Notre Dame getting that goal off of Anil Ento's beautiful run off of Baffour's pass. And Baffour trying to make another play, but gets tackled from behind and another foul called for the Irish. And going back to that possession at least that Notre Dame started off of that, you know, it's interesting to see IUPI switch to pressing more of three players up top. In the start of the game, it was more of just Gomez or Finnegan, depending on which one was closest, just chasing the ball. Now they're behind, they've got to commit more people to that press. You see you're seeing more of a three-man press, you know, more of a three-three, uh, four almost, in uh, the mid, you know, rather in the front line, midfield, back line, if that makes sense. You know, something that I don't think we saw early on in the game for IUPI. 
Forcing it again, just getting a little bit too, too far underneath. Moorefield collecting it. Moorefield has been such a successful goalkeeper for the Jags. I mean, last year in the Horizon League tournament was an all-tournament team honoree. Had four shutouts last season, the most in the program in over 10 years. Just a really strong presence for the IUPUI Jaguars. You can't say enough about the value of having a goalie you can trust in college soccer, especially when, you know, as we saw against Indiana, sometimes goals come in chaotic ways. Having a reliable pair of hands between the sticks is, you know, really a colossal upside, a colossal benefit to teams like IUPUI, especially when they're trying to pull an upset like tonight. You mentioned that game against Indiana. You're talking about that fast response. Notre Dame scored off of that Patty Burns header, but then all of a sudden Indiana just comes roaring back three minutes later. Something nice to see, at least that Chad Raleigh's crew has really honed in and really dug in their heels and not let up on their energy. Yeah, the tenor of that Indiana match was, you know, a really interesting one in the sense that it felt like it was pretty open, I'd say, for the first, you know, 20 or so minutes. The Notre Dame was able to get the first. Indiana kind of woke up after that, tied it up, and then once again it kind of went back to a pretty open game where both teams had their chances, but neither could really convert on the one that counted the most, which would be the one that gave them the lead. I think game that both India and Notre Dame could take some major pauses and negatives away from, but ultimately a result both teams would have taken. You see there, number 28, Brady Horn stepping the Baffour in that half space. We were trying to make that run there. Baffour with the ball and just is uncovered and gets the goal. That's the problem with trying to man mark in possession for Horn. Goes up to bat four, make sure he can't drive forward with it, but then he has to get back into position. You see him running backwards, and then bat four gets the cutback. No one's on him. That's about as easy a finish as you can ask for. Obviously, it's never that easy of a finish when you're 15 yards out of goal, but when you're unmarked, it makes it that much more easy. Bat four doing a really nice job of just being aware, just staying in his place, and just goes uncovered by the Jags. And it's a tough goal for IUPUI. You see there, it's just a deflection. You know, both defenders see the ball, see the cutback coming, and they both react to it, but it goes back to Baffour, and the goal gets deflected, too, into the back of the net. You know, deflections are always difficult, but to concede two and one chance, that's especially rough, but Baffour's going to be happy to get on the score sheet no matter how. Okay, Baffour, an all-freshman ACC team member last season, had 9 of 16 starts last season. Of course, he had that really iconic goal against UVA. That really was like the spark to his game. After that, he was just on fire for the Irish. Yeah, and Baffour, a player that oh, will hold that thought as IUPUI can get on the break here. Colby there trying to play a pass there to Gomez. Gomez meeting the body of Ramsey as he's turning. Neither of those two players are small either. That was a collision of force. But going back to Baffour, he's a player that you know showed flashes last year. Someone that could really be you know an All ACC level impact player. And heading into the season, you know he was a player that I think Notre Dame really expected, perhaps more than any of the other freshmen that got minutes last year, to really break out, be someone that could turn from a starter to a star. And uh, through two games, we've seen a lot of evidence that that transition could be occurring. Two assists now, now a goal. It's been involved every goal Notre Dame scored this year. You can't ask for much more out of a sophomore who you're looking to take the jump. Really speaks to the amount of talent that Coach Riley has really been able to put together on the Irish team as Ferguson sends it up to Burns. Burns just trying to get the play the ball, playing the ball back to Ramsey. day here, 74 degrees, sunny skies, no clouds in sight. Just can't ask for a better stage to play a great soccer game. A far cry from the humid, you know, weather that got Thursday's game pushed back. You don't see that yep, that often. Yep. They moved the game back just because it was so hot. We were sweating through our suits up in the press box, and this is not a press box that lacks air conditioning either, so I think it says quite a bit about just how hot it was. I think real field peaked over 100 degrees as that one's going to be off sides. You mentioned Notre Dame's game. How about IUPUI's game against Southern Indiana? They had 
got the lead two hours before they could get out on the, f on the field. And then finally the players are saying, all right, let's just get out there and get this game started. So they had both, but all the teams in the NCAA really had to fight through, especially on the northern side where you don't, you don't normally get a lot of that heat going here in the, in the north. You, know, you typically think of that in more of the southern states, but it's crept up here into South Bend, Indiana. And, you know, maybe Notre Dame, who plays in the ACC and often, you know, has to deal with, you know, going to environments that, you know, in the later months of the fall, you know, if you've got to play down at Clemson, which they don't have to do this year, but if you have to play in some of the ACC states, like in North Carolina, where it's different weather, getting a game in the heat's not going to be that bad for you because it's going to prepare you for a climate like that, you know, when you're going from 40 degrees in South Bend to, you know, maybe 60 degrees in Raleigh, 90 degrees in South Bend in August is an extreme example, but it gives you that much more, you know, ability to have gotten experience in some more adverse conditions. Baffor goes down there. Belling is just coming in from behind, trying to go for the ball. Fortunately, Eclipse clips Baffor and Baffor goes down for a free kick, another free kick for the Irish. Kind of in the same situation, same similar spot they've had before. I'm talking about not wanting to make sure Baffor gets the ball in those pockets. That's one way to make sure he can't turn forward. That's a nice win there on the tackle. Great challenge there by Vellings. Ooh, Haka trying to show off the moves there, trying to just keep possession. Thompson Roberts playing it back to Moorfield. High press so far from the Irish, not giving an inch of breathing space. As once again, here come the Irish. Rue coming with the ball, cutting it in and blocked off again by the Jags. Moorfield just inside there. Looked like he was beat, but I think he just got his arms stretched out there enough to block it off. Yeah, Russo's done some good work today with being quick feet. You know, nice little move to not take it first time. He could have taken it first time, but saw he could get a better angle if he pulled it back, which he does, but nice work by IUPUI to stay resolute in defense and deny him once again. But if he keeps on dribbling like this around the net, you gotta imagine he'll keep on finding those shots. F4 taking another corner for the Irish, sending it into the box forward, at front post. Getting it once more, another opportunity for the Irish, but good stuff. Gomez here in the defense. Gomez really showing off the versatility he has. You know, he's we've we've touted him as such a great off offensive player, of course. He was the Horizon League freshman of the year. But really a force to be reckoned with, especially in this after his preseason. Two goals in the second half against Evansville after they were down 2-1. As McColby will come out and Healy will come in for the Jaguars. I was taking possession once again to Enuento, trying to finesse his way out of such a sticky situation. Ramsey not allowing Finnegan to turn, and the Irish will once again take over on their side of the field. That pairing, pairing of Finnegan and Gomez up top has such a difficult job because they have to hold the ball up effectively and then also try to find, you know, really once they get the ball in those situations, one of each other. You know, they're the only two ones up there really to receive that ball in most situations. And they've done well for what they've been given so far, but they're going to need to figure out how to create a chance out of it eventually. So, Rue with the ball here up against Thompson Roberts. Thompson Roberts doing a really nice job keeping him front. Ball being sent in. Patty Burns trying to get his head on it, but will be get once again fended off. Not if Radovoya has something to say about that, as it once again is an Irish throw in. Patty Burns talked about dangerous in the box. I think you maybe saw in his eyes there he's considering a bicycle kick, but opted against it, pulled out, went for a simple header across the box. What a moment that would have been though for a player that has a you know has an ability to find those big moments. I think that was a little too ambitious though. Another Irish throwing on the far side, right into the sun. So Burns will be taking it. And Radovoya will be receiving it, playing it all the way back to Ferguson. Now again, Bacher playing it up to Russo. Russo playing it back. Just a little bit of just 
Trying to find those passes as Rue takes the ball for himself and gets tripped up after trying to cut it back and quickly getting it back up again, but will get called back. Smart foul there by the Jaguars too, because if Rue had looked up, which he was in the process of doing when he was fouled, then Oento was in acres of space. I don't know if he was onside or offside, but if that pass got made, he would have been in one-on-one -on -one easily with the keeper. Instead, they make a smart foul and reset play. And eventually win the ball because of it. So with the ball just getting fought off, Morefield sending it back up again to Haka. Haka playing it up. Beautiful header to Gomez. Now we got a transition ball here for Gomez. Gonna get it on the left. Now he's gonna be dishing it out right to Correa. Correa trying to figure his way through. As the pass through the middle there gets intercepted by Ramsey and gets sent back up for a Jacks throw in. And that possession starts right there with Moorefield in net. That's really good distribution. Someone who's, you know, the sign of a keeper that's confident with his back line, that you know, knows his place between the sticks. And it's a nice find, not a ton of pressure, but enough to make it difficult. He hit that one with ease. And as a result, Jaguars are able to build out out of possession after that flicked on header. Build on in possession, I should say. Correa just trying to find the right pass. Haka playing it, playing it over his head to try and find Finnegan. While still being in the air, the team has really been able to settle it down and gain possession as Correa settles it finally and plays it back to Moore. Moorefield. Moorefield switching it once again. IUPUI looking a little more confident after that first attack, you know, a little more steady in possession, you know, a team that has a little more. There's a push there by Anoento, and we'll see if that gets called. It does. Hands went up. Referee's going to give that every time. Anoento, I mean, he may not be on the ACC preseason watch list like Patty Burns, but he is still a player to watch on the Irish, especially with, from what Coach Chad says. He really thinks that he can really break out this season, and so far, I mean, like that run, like the one we just saw in that first goal, he can, definitely has the potential to really become a centerpiece for the Irish offense. So the ball gets sent up from Ramsey to Ento. Ento does a lot of the little things right as a striker. He's a willing presser. He makes the right runs. You know, a lot of things that, you know, a lot of the stuff that when you have the physical tools, if you were able to get the stuff down on the mental side, like knowing when to make the right run. That's where Ento thrives. He's always making the right run. He's always picking a channel out where a defender can't really find him. You know, if those are the tools that you can't teach someone. You know, they know if they have the instincts, the poacher's instincts, they're able to just have them. And that's what Ento has. And if he keeps on getting in the right spots, it's hard to imagine that the finishing touch won't come. And as we saw from the goal there, maybe it's starting to come in this year. from Derby, England, just has the accolades to really become a good player. 20 goals, 14 assists back at Derby. He's also a track and field runner. He'd run 200 meters in the U15 group, winning that. So he's got the speed to pair that with the talent. And to the speed point, that pressing is something I think really is going to make him a staple in this Notre Dame lineup. The ability to keep on making sure goalies never have an easy pass because he keeps on running in and you know, we saw it a couple times against Indiana. You know, it's very easy to force some miscommunication, force a cheap mistake along the back line when you're just keeping up pressure. And we'll see some pressure now. And not a turnover result, actually, really good build up from IUPUI. Parker there receiving the ball and sending it all the way up to Finnegan. Finnegan getting caught off again by the Irish defense. I don't think Finnegan agreed with that call, to say the least, based off the reaction. Notre Dame preparing a line change substitution. Four players currently up at the halfway line. So with the ball, just kind of fit. trying to find somewhere to go. But Ferguson looking up to Patty Burns all the way up the field on the left side. Burns making a beautiful run, beautiful touch into the box, but just a little bit too heavy. And now Moorefield gets in. This is a prime opportunity for the Jags to try and counter. 
You know, we talked about Burns being the fulcrum of that, you know, unique system. You see right there the change from the four at the back to a three at the back as Burns goes up and becomes a midfielder. And what a ball, what a touch, but the touch had to be perfect and instead it was almost perfect. And nearly came off even then, but nice alert keeping from Moorfield, experienced keeping from Moorfield to get off his lines and smother that up. If another keeper had stayed rooted to his spot, Burns very well could have been in with a goal there. Throw in for the Irish. Brings out a slew of substitutions for them. Michael Pellegrino comes in. Up at the front for Russo. Interesting to get a look at the freshman, Nolan Spicer, someone that you know impressed in the preseason. You know, you gotta figure at least looking at the preseason games, he'd be a player that might get some reps in the regular season. This feels like the type of game where they're gonna want him to get some touches, gets his feet wet in the game. You know, he wasn't really prominent against IU, but this is the type of game where you throw a freshman in there, only 10 minutes left in the half, you're up 2 nothing. you're generally speaking in control of the game. You know, see what he can do in a controlled environment. And surely they're gonna be looking for him to, you know, really be a player to step up as they you, know, you always want to have freshmen get involved early on in the year, and this is just the type of game, IU, not really the environment where you want to test out freshmen. This, however, is. As Patty Burns is staying in on the left side. Trying to find his way through the Jags. Gomez receiving the interception. Getting fended off once more. Burns taking the ball up the side. Half four. Trying to make something good with it up the side, but will result and a corner kick after Correa stabbed it out. Burns now coming out. I think he's earned his rest after that shift on the left flank. We'll get Sebastian Green a look. We'll see if that tweaks the formation or if Green will be playing fullback. Uh, Four sends it into the middle there. Gomez getting a nice header to clear it out. And now Finnegan trying to get a good step on. And now this is a really good opportunity for the Jags to counter suit as Hackett receives the ball from Finnegan, going up the right side. Ramsey doing a spectacular job just keeping him in front and not allowing him to get to turn the Jets upfield. Yeah, nice composure of the Notre Dame back line. It's easy to kind of hit the fire alarms when a situation like that occurs. And two on two break instead. They keep it calm, and eventually Green tracks backs, makes a nice interception, or a tackle rather, and Notre Dame is able to reset without too much panic, I'd say, along that back line. As we get down inside 10 minutes here, Notre Dame up 2 0 after Anuento's beautiful run to start it off. And KK Baffors just open. Shots after two deflections off of the off of two Jag defenders. Just really fortunate stuff to try and work with. As the Irish will try and punish the corner with Correa. That defensive side. Once more, Thompson Roberts receiving the ball, trying to dish it out. Get this offense going a little bit. Get a little bit of patience, a little bit of time. Row four, the Jags receiving the ball. As Healy tries to turn it upfield. Once more, it's the Irish offense. This time, Nolan Spicer getting in front. Flag goes up. The ball just barely went out of bounds. I feel I no doubt disappointed because it, you know, that was one of their special, you know, possessions. They've had spells where. They've looked quite good in possession. They've looked like they've had some real bite to them. This maybe being one of them. It's well battled by Sebastian Green with some help as well from Wyatt Lewis. Wyatt Lewis taking a throw in and just quickly getting it out. Ferguson with the ball. Ramsey plays it up to Balfour. Ramsey's been such a good presence for the Irish. I mean, we talked about that run, a title run that they had two years ago. I mean, he was a freshman there, but still he made a major presence, taking pr prominent amount of the starts in the back line. He's just a lot of experience 
for the Irish to have defensively. That's just a sloppy pass from IUPUI. You know, had a chance there to maybe tilt the field, create numbers, and you know, make something of it, but ultimately just overhit the pass, and Notre Dame will get the chance to reset. But back to the earlier point, IUPUI, for all accounts, you know, they've, Notre Dame's controlled this game, but IUPUI has had stretches where they've looked like they've had ideas, they've looked like they've had you know, things they've wanted to do in possession. A lot of them come off, you know, give all credit to uh, Gomez and Finnegan in particular up top there. Haven't been given an easy job, but they've made the most of it, I'd say. As Finnegan receives the ball, trying to play it up, it is blocked by Spicer. As he was trying to make the pass, Spicer just steps in front of him, just blocking the kick. Now Spicer will get a talking to. So play quickly resumes. Felix playing it to Correa. Correa almost getting intercepted there. Just relentless defense on the Irish on the Irish side. Not just not on the defensive half, but also by their forwards and midfielders. Yeah, Spicer definitely a aggressive presence. He's playing that forward role now. He's also a capable midfielder. I think we're saying seeing some of that midfield bite perhaps in him right now as he keeps on pressing, keeps on making hard challenges. No doubt when you're a freshman, you want to make your impact. You want to, you know, show that you're capable of playing in these situations. And Spicer's looking to do just that. Hyatt Lewis fighting off Gomez there up front. Gomez going down. That will be a break as the clock stops. Just a really physical battle out here so far. And that's something that Coach Tad really talked about for the identity of his team. You know, he wants his team to be physical, always be relentless, but also fearless. Yeah, you know, this is a game where, you know, grit, aggression, you know, especially in his midfield possessions, really has kind of defined the game, so to speak. There's been a lot of moments where these 50-50 balls have been what set off a chance for one team or the other. Neither team wants to give up those chances. Neither team wants to be the one that doesn't take advantage of those chances when they come. So there's been plenty of, you know, it's not fighting in the midfield, but it's definitely been, you know, some physical action. And both teams trying to make the most of when that action comes, being the one that wins that battle and that moment, and as a result, creating the chance. Arfield stepping up out of the box to try and create some space, some more space for the Irish to try and back off of the over the top ball. Once more, just loses it. Borso with the ball, but just can't quite settle it down as the ball gets sent away again. Ramsey on the header. This ball just keeps going back and forth between both these teams. Getting in the final five minutes here of the first half. Jags trying to look to put something up on the board before they go in to have something positive to try and look through as Gomez there in the sliding tackle off of Ramsey, which creates another Irish throw-in. Ball goes out once again, and this time it's for the Jags. Jags throwing it in, quickly getting it back, but once again, Wyatt Lewis this time getting in front for the Irish. So the ball gets sent back around, and Ramsey looking up to make a play over the top. Sebastian Green makes the run up the left side. But Thompson Roberts getting in front, not allowing Green to turn up and turn in into the middle there. As it looks like it might be Gettenbacher who will be taking the throw, crossing all the way back from the right back position. This is well within his range, and you know that Notre Dame likes it when they can get bodies in the box, almost as if it's, you know, uh, basically a corner for Notre Dame. When Ben Gennenbacher's throwing the ball into the, into the box, his ability to really just get the ball across the field and launch them, something that caused a lot of havoc in 2021 on that College Cup team. See what they can do with this one. This ball gets thrown in there into the center there, but lots of pushing, lots of shoving in the center there. Gives a foul for the Jags to kind of build off of, and Moorfield just taking this quickly, trying to get it up to Finnegan. 
And Finnegan getting caught just too far off sides, too far behind the Irish back line. Yeah, and it was a clever attempt by Moorfield to keep quick play. We saw against Indiana, Notre Dame use that to their advantage, just putting the ball down and going. Teams not always fully prepared to track a runner, especially in the immediate you know, aftermath of a foul. But that time, the run was just a little too far off sides. And the pass, even if he was on side, I think was a little too short to make an effective breakout. But a good idea regardless by an experienced player. I was just trying to move the ball back in and out. Went back from midfield, back into the defense. Again, putting pressure on Gennenbacher now. Gennenbacher moving up into the front line as Pellegrino tries to make something with, with the outside. Just too many red shirts in front of him as Brucker and Healy are in front of him. See there Mitch Ferguson at the top end of our view. Requesting permission to head in there for this throw in as Notre Dame lines up as they would a corner kick, more or less. The usual suspects in the box, only Ramsey hanging back to be the last man. Throws goes into the middle, but Moorfield going way up top shelf to get that grab. Let's see if they can create anything on the break in transition. Ball getting sent up to Finnegan. Finnegan trying to receive the ball. Hard push in the back there. Onto, onto Green. I was wondering who had Andrew he played too, because Green stayed on his feet and actually might have had something if he had been able to play on, but ultimately referee chooses to, chooses to blow the whistle. Reset play once again. And with a minute left, you gotta imagine both these teams more in consent content. Notre Dame up 2-0, IUPUI not being in possession of the ball to let the clock run out if that's what happened, but he'll see if they can do something here. Great, getting that interception, trying to make something happen. Gomez receiving it up. What a ball. Taco with the shot. Dowd doing a beautiful ball, but Finnegan getting the ball back. Trying to create possession off of it, but we'll get fouled off once again by Brian Dowd. Dowd doing a really nice job there. He hasn't had a lot of action today, tonight, but especially in the closing minutes, you can't count the Jaguars out. No, he had to stay alert in that game, in this game, even though you know he hasn't really been called upon to make any saves. That time he is, and that time he was ready for it. He didn't flinch, he didn't back down, he just put his hands out. Not the hardest save in the world, but one he had to be alert to make, and that's exactly what he did. The Irish take over. Ramsey trying to look up, trying to get something over the top. Bonu will have it, playing it over to Gennenbacher. Final 10 seconds here in South Bend. Gennenbacher looking over the top, but will be called for a foul. And that'll be the first half here in Alumni Stadium. Notre Dame up 2-0 against the... On the right side of there, IUPUI receiving the, getting the start of the ball off with the second half. Finnegan plays it back to Healy, and Healy starting out in the second half. As we start out here in Alumni Stadium in South Bend, I'm John French, joined alongside JJ Post. Let's see what the Jaguars have cooking up, especially after going into the locker room. Yes, yeah, so that was the most interesting part of the game. Both teams have thrown their first punch. They've came out, they've lined up as they do to start the game off. Now both coaches have to have time to make adjustments, make tweaks, and let's see what the counter punch is. Okay, they are trying to play it to Kumro. Kumro just a little bit too far up, giving him the thumbs up, knowing where he'll be next time as Patty Burns will take the throw in for the Irish. That's something been of the story of the game for IUPUI, at least on the offensive end. They've had a couple of times where they've maybe been able to switch the field and create some numbers, but feels like every time they've had a chance to maybe do that, the pass has just been a foot too wide, a foot too high, and they've had to reset and start from scratch once again, as they're now going to have to do as Notre Dame once again takes control of the ball. And the shove in the back there by Horn on the end toe gives Iris the free kick. Skennenbacher plays it up. Ferguson. Jack showing a little bit of life here, especially on the offensive side, putting high press. Got fresh legs now coming out of halftime. They've all had their break. They've gotten some water. Let's see if that energy can create some results. Gomez intercepting the ball there off again in Bacher, but just not getting enough time to settle in, get gain control, total control of the ball. 
And Dowd having to make that play, get the ball out of the box, resulting in a throw in for the Jags. Dowd limped away from that clearance. He's fine, he's in goal now, but that was not what you want to see if you're an Irish fan, especially because Dowd, you know, was harboring something in preseason. They had to, you know, work with some other goalies to give him some rest, and hopefully he comes up okay because he was limping after that one. Jamsey take, taking it in to the defending third of the Jaguars. Receiving it to Baffour, Baffour receiving it. Nice little stuff. Defense by Horn there. Coming up the offense there of the Irish. It's Finnegan and Haka try and play it. Play some toe tap in there, but and getting a little chippy there out there on the pitch, especially between Haka and Finnegan. Up against Br Bryce Banu there. Yeah, there were some words exchanged for sure. Not totally sure who started it and who said what, obviously from our angle, roughly 100 feet away, but referee obviously saw something he took exception to, both in the foul and then in the extracurricular activity afterwards. Had some words, no cards though. I think he told them just keep it calm. We only got 42 minutes left. No need to be giving out stuff just for talk at this point in the game. Thompson Roberts getting the ball, dishing it out to Correa. Correa playing it up the middle to Finnegan. So Finnegan plays it back up to his offense, trying to see if they can receive it, but fortunately Correa will fall. And I'll create a foul on the Irish, giving the ball to the Jaguars. Notre Dame certainly not playing with a lack of intensity. You see there Ento too, getting physical on the press. So Irish team's coming with urgency. IPY is matching it. Nice switch of play there. Big, long ball to Kumro. Once again, we'll play it back to Brady Horn. Horn to Haka. So Yento now in front of Haka, just a, just a line of defense as Haka plays it all the way up across the field. Bakker in the way, but gets sent out as Brooker tries to throw on a cross, but just goes wide left, hits the side of the net. That's what you want to see for the Jaguars, staying calm, staying patient in possession. They switched the field twice. Once it opened up a little bit on the right side, then they head over to the left, and look at that. They got a shot out of it. You know, that's the type of stuff your coach that, you know, maybe you're seeing because it's right after the coach talked to told them, stay patient, wait for your chance to come, and you'll see openings. And that time, they, that's exactly what happened. They got an opening once they stayed patient. This little pass there to Baffour. Baffour turning it, turning upfield, trying to find Enyoento. Nice little deflect there by Horn. Sending it out into the back of the back of the foul line there, and that'll create a corner kick for the Irish. First one of the second half. Just keep that one short to Baffour, who's usually the corner kick taker. Irish trying to play quickly. Rue sending it into the middle. Endo trying to get in that, get his head and time it perfectly, but Jaguars getting on it too, too far in front. Interesting dynamic there between Russo and Baffour. Baffour, the usual takers. Here comes the press once again. But that time it was Russo that took it, and eventually Russo that almost created the chance with the second very ball into the box. That one goes off ahead. They kicked there by Russo into Gomez. A little more chaotic to start the second half, to say the least. Both these teams bringing plenty of energy to this second frame. And as a result, the game's opening up, I'd say, a little more than it was at the end of the first half when teams maybe a little more tired, waiting for the break to happen. It's almost like Coach Van Drunen just came into the locker room and said, guys, we just need to get more energy out there. We just, we're letting them play their game, letting them make the pace of play. Let's get up, let's get in there, let's get physical. As Patty Burns is taking it up the line there, trying to get into bat four, bat four, quickly trying to get it in, but will not get called inside the box. He hits the dirt. Referee saw that one all the way, waved it off. He knew what he was calling and stayed confident. Baffour, I think, thought there was a little more contact than the ref did. Thompson Roberts receiving such a short goal kick there. Enuento just taking advantage of the opportunity to put some pressure on him. And look at that. It's almost as if Baffour did get, get the foul there outside the box. And now it's a, a free kick for the ice in such a dangerous position. Yeah, it's not a penalty kick, but you can't 
ask for more of a dangerous position for a free kick than this one, especially with you know some of the weapons Notre Dame has inside the box, in and around the box, on set pieces. You know, they got one against Indiana that way, and they got the same delivery man in KK Baffor to whip it in. Let's we'll see if they can create something from it. I would imagine this will go into the box, but technically speaking, Baffor could also shoot if he so wishes. Though it certainly seems more field is hedging against that possibility with the way he's setting up closer to his far post than his near post. Hattie Burns in the box there. Had that goal last week off the header. Baffor sending it in, trying to go near post. Trying to thread it in, in between Moorefield and the post, but just wide left. Yeah, and it's a, a difficult angle, but Moorefield did give him it and you know told him, you know, I want, want to make sure I got my back post covered. If you can reach the near post, basically go for it. I'm testing you. And Baffor took the test, but ultimately it had to be a perfect angle, and it was not close enough to perfect. Look at it again here, Baffour. Getting a nice little kickoff, just wide. Almost, it almost looks like it was just feet, just one foot off. But it's just those small little margins, especially as you go day to day. Just trying to get, trying to make it better. Just trying to minimize those margins of error. Yeah, and the uh, the irony of it, perhaps, is if that free kick was actually a little farther out, maybe it would have had a better chance because it was a late break. You know, it felt like the curve came a little too late after he hit it to. Uh, get inside that post and you know if that foul had occurred a little farther out of goal in a little hypothetically less dangerous position for the free kick, maybe that ball bends into the post and has more time to hit the angle properly. Brew with the ball just sending it out, giving the Jags another throw in, but still another high press situation for the Jaguars to have to deal with. There's a shove in the back there by Bonnie will give a free kick easily to the Jaguars. The Jaguars trying to pick up the pace of play, play at their tempo. And Notre Dame getting quickly back into position, recovering back on defense. Yeah, but no, never one for a lack of activity in the midfield, at least physically, and that one's gonna fall. Wow, great shot opportunity there for Finnegan. Ramsey just was a little bit caught too far out in front of the ball as he tries to get a header on it. Trying to send it back forward, but instead sends it back towards his goal. And you'll see here, it's just a misjudgment of where it was, and he does just enough actually to make this a difficult angle for Finnegan. He kind of has to watch the ball come over his shoulder and pull it out of the air. So ultimately, Ramsey making the most of what was a bad situation and able to maybe do just enough to save you know, what would have been a clear cut goal into a less clear cut goal. Here comes Ramsey out of the excuse me, Rue out all the way out from the backfield. Trying to make that run up past Jaguars, but once again, Jaguars taking advantage, playing, being very physical. Enyo trying to get, Enyo Ento trying to get a run in, being held back. And it looks like it'll be a yellow card on Vellings for that massive pull. That was a tactical yellow all the way through, Radivosa. Did his best to stay on his feet and just fight his way through it. IPUI seemed like they were determined to make sure that they just take the free kick there in a relatively non threatening area, I'd say, although this is more or less where Notre Dame was able to get their goal off a of set piece against Indiana. But you'd certainly rather this than a free ball right from the middle of your defense, Dano Ento. The free kick here that Baffour is taking. This time much, much further outside the box, playing it short to Rue. Before sending it all the way in, Moorefield going up to grab it, but falling down right on his chest. I think Moorefield perhaps almost expected to have someone there to kind of fall upon, and both teams almost backed off when he called it. I think he just didn't have anything to break his fall, but strong hands regardless. Well played. Great interplay there by Notre Dame. Patty Burns there just getting it up. Nice little combo in between the Irish defense and midfield. This creates such a great counterattack for them. Now, once again, the Jaguars are pinned into their own defensive half. This ball gets sent up to his Haka. Haka trying, as, trying as he might to find an open player, to open red shirt to play to. But Russo taking it, 
Trying to fight off three defenders, trying to thread it between Thompson Roberts and Anto and Yoento. And now that'll be another yellow. This time on the Haka. Same call, same response as last time. Just a tactical yellow. Russo does well to work his way through a couple defenders, and IUPUI says, hey, we'll rather take a free kick, you know, however many yards out from goal than have him wait a through ball right through and create a one-on-one -on -one chance. And, you know, in terms of the risk reward in a two-nothing game, I think they'll take a yellow over a one-on-one -on -one chance that could potentially break the game wide open and make it three-nothing. Another free quick quickly taken as Patty Burns sends it to Baffour. Baffour looking to cross it with his left foot. Fended off once again by Gomez. This will be another corner taken by KK Baffour. Same Notre Dame looks short again. They've got a runner coming up close to Baffour, not a runner, rather, a recipient in Bonneau. This one they're going to put to the edge of the box. We're still trying to settle it after the pass from Baffour, but just too many, too much pressure from the Jacks defense in front of them, forcing it out, creating a more field goal kick. I'm going to be a little more comfortable to experiment with these corner kicks up to nothing, more willing to kind of see what they can maybe sneak off with instead of trying to just hit it into the box and hope for an easy chance. Radovoya just intercepts the ball there. And they'll get another chance. Another chance for the Irish. I mean, gosh, you just can't. How do, how do you counter such a high press situation that the Irish put on you, the JJ. I mean, there's no easy way to do it, especially when Notre Dame has been pulling off the interplay as well as they have. We've seen Burns and Baffour in particular are really good one-twos. They play so quickly. When they're doing that, it's difficult to stop, and that's why I think you've seen the Jaguars a little turn a little more to just tactical fouling in the midfield, force a free kick out of it. Uh, for sending it into the middle of the box. Morfield just getting an easy grab. And when you've got a goalkeeper like Moorfield, it's a little easier to give up those corner kicks and free kicks because you know you can trust him to in the box, be someone who can claim it, you know, be assertive and reliable. And when you've got someone with as strong hands as he does, it's a bit easier to allow yourself to give up those chances because you know even if the ball goes in the box, even if it's a good delivery, Moorfield will be out and he'll be ready to claim it. Moorfield, a captain for the Jaguars this season. Really nice handle touch. pressure. Nice little pass there between Russo and Bat Baffour. Russo trying to take the ball up the right side, getting around the defenders. It looks like Rule will just try and take it. As once again, now Patty Burns is going to try and take it on his own. He had an eye for goal there. It looked like he thought he could knife his way through defenders. Good work by IUPUI IUP to stay resolute, though, because Burns definitely had an eye for goal. Burns sending it off that. Nice little left foot going far post, but no one there. Russo, the closest Notre Dame shirt to be there, but just a little bit off target, a little bit of mistiming. Like we said at the halftime, just a lot of chances for the Irish to try and capitalize. This time coming off a lot of free kicks, a lot of corners, a lot of crosses getting it, getting pushed into the box. Yeah, it feels like the first 15 minutes where Notre Dame was knocking on the door, they kept on getting into the right positions. They haven't capitalized off just yet. And we'll see at what point they're able to, if they are able to, you know, find that finishing blow and get that third goal that'll really break this game open. Ramsey versus Hakahaka Haka trying to put the pressure on. And he's sent away as we see Finnegan here trying to thread the ball to the Jaguar midfielders, but once again get forced back. Thompson Roberts taking the ball. Ball get played around to Correa. A little bit of a spill there by Ferguson, just giving the Jaguars maybe an opportunity after Finnegan received the ball and tried to dish it out to Gomez. It's a little too heavy of a touch. Right idea, you know, getting the ball up to the target man and trying to lay it off and build from there, but ultimately, you gotta be perfect with every one of your touches when you're playing a team like Notre Dame, where they're going to have the numerical advantage in most situations just because of the way IPUI is set up with, right now, basically a five-man back line. Now it's more of a four-man back line, but at the moment it was a five. You know, when you have so many of those players backed up in any situation, Notre Dame is going to be able to have numerical advantages even when you're able to get the ball to your center forwards. And, you know, even when you're able to do that, you got to make sure the touches are perfect and they're able to be incisive, and that just wasn't it. The Irish do a little bit of a combo there between the defense and midfield. Eddie Burns sending it up to Baffour. 
Horn on the back of Bathforce, sending it back to Gomez. It's Patty Burns sending it into the left with the left shot. Ennio Ento trying to dive for it off the header. But Moorefield right in front of him to block it out. And Ramsey with possession, but Gomez tripping him up. Being a free kick for the Irish on their half. Some discontent there from IUPUI. I think they thought that should have been play on, but the referee, you know, we've talked about fouls they're going to give every time. And, you know, when they're looking at the back of a play and they see the hands up, you know, it makes it too easy of a call for them. And no matter how little or how much contact is made, when they see two hands go up, that's going to be a whistle. Let's get through the first 15 minutes into the second half. It just seems to be an all the Irish so far. First two goals came in the first half. First one off of Enyanto, and the second one with KK Baffour. It's for the Jaguars. I mean, they've had, had such a rocky start two seasons ago where they were 3 and 12. Last season, they brought a new head, had a new head, first year head coach, Sid Van Drunen, step up, really take this program and really right the ship after such a rocky. 2020, 2021, they had such a strong response, especially in the championship, going to the championship of the Horizon League tournament last season. Van Druen's work's been really impressive, honestly. You know, it's not easy in one year to kind of rebuild the cultural program, you know, especially, you know, you can bring in players that will add talent to your team, but off the pitch as well, instilling a winning mentality, and that's pretty much what he did, flipping a team that, you know, went from being one of the worst teams to one of the best. This Jaguars defense trying to clamp down on this Irish offense as Enuento gets the better on the turn. Russo, ooh, almost gets the little chip there over Moorefield, just not quite enough angled off his left foot to get it onto frame. Can't say enough about this turn here by Enuento. We're gonna see it on the replay. Using the body as a feint rather than a physical tool, just really deft, lowers the shoulder, gets around his man, puts in a cross that's right on the foot of Russo, and ultimately Russo, disappointed he couldn't put in the back of the net. Not an easy finish by any means, but a pass that was worthy of a goal, or rather a move into the pass that was worthy of a goal. The Jaguars will make substitutions of their own, but quickly getting back up, Rue with the ball, going straight into the Straight into the box of the Jaguars, shooting it to back left, and it's a goal for Matthew Rue. Clinical, composed, everything you want from a forward from Matthew Rue, right there, gets in on net, takes his time. He doesn't just try to blast it as soon as he looks up and sees he's got a one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. He's willing to be patient. He's willing to make sure that the angle is just right, and he is rewarded for that patience. You see here, he gets in. He has a chance to shoot there, but he pulls it back. He makes sure he got the angle he wants. He takes it cleanly. Nice little hold up to make sure he gets the defender out of his way because the defender had caught up on him. And ultimately, just really patient stuff from Matthew Rue. You know, the sign of a player that's grown, I think, a little bit every year he's been in South Bend, and a player that I think is looking to have his best year yet in this campaign. Matthew Rue, part of the 2021 PCC All-Freshman team with Josh Ramsey just continuing to pump out the results and the points for the Irish. As the Jaguars will try and respond here, Nice little cross over to, over to the back post. But again, in the center, Gomez trying to send it up. But the Irish once again getting a foothold onto it. It's Korea looking to send it back in with his left foot. Josh Ramsey getting in front of that once again and sending the ball the other way. Nice response there by the Jaguars to be willing to commit numbers forward. You know, try a little sequence where they go to the back post and float it into the middle. And very nearly comes off too, you know. Maybe just a few inches in the other direction. That's right on the foot of the target man, and not, you know, almost on the foot. But regardless, you know, good to see that action. Here they come again. It's Ferguson trying to battle up with Gomez, just a, almost a just pacing each other, trying to see who will get to the ball first. Ferguson 
doing a nice job of good putting his body in between the ball and Gomez. That's see it. Sets up another corner for the for the Jaguars. Well, let's see what they do with this one. Last time they tried to go to the back post and make it more of a two-pass move than a true just into the box headed in. Let's see if they try to go with something elaborate or not elaborate, but you know a little more elaborate than you usually see. Once again here. Right two on the corner, sending it into the middle of the box. Gomez trying to reach his get all the way up there in the center. There didn't really have a lot of competition up in the air. There could have gotten a header on it, but this times it was over his head and now it results in Jaguars throw in. And the cross will come in to Gomez. Gomez trying to get onto it, but the ref will call it off of Ferguson's touch. And now create another corner opportunity for the Jags. Yeah, it's an excellent delivery right there to get the ball to Gomez, even though Gomez can't get the head onto it. It does create danger. It makes Notre Dame, you know, have to, you know, kind of not panic per se, but they've got to make sure they get it out. And that time they Force another corner. Yeto sitting at far, far, far back post. It's Correa there. Excuse me. Kumro there trying to get the ball close and get it back into the box. But goes off an Irish defender. We're switching sides here on the corner kicks. Nieto getting it once again. Great yeah, right, late back post run by Kumro who kind of almost lurks at the edge of the box or the edge of the grouping in the box and then makes a late run into the back post and very nearly goes unmarked. Notre Dame does well to retreat and get bodies in front of the post. Morrison sending it in there. As Kumro receives it. And another cross will get deflected off at this time of Banu. While doing his job to keep defense out as Finnegan will try and step in, inside off of Baffour, but will get sent out once again. But this time it'll be an Irish goal kick. I think Notre Dame's gonna Definitely take the time to set up here because that last few uh, minutes, IEPI looked like the more controlling team and obviously hasn't been the uh, indicative of the overall complexion of the match. But, you know, you don't want to have any minutes, you know, in a game where the other team looks to be consistently on the front foot. And that's exactly what that was for IEPI and all credit to them. Notre Dame, no doubt, though, wanting to calm things down a little more, especially after they've went ahead by three goals. Kobe Simming trying to send it up to Gomez, but just a little bit too far out wide. Giving Gemmin and Bacher the opportunity to throw it in as we have an Irish sub coming onto the field. So it looks like Russo will be coming out. And Michael Pellegrino will come in. Gemmin and Bacher, it seems, will earn the captain's armband in the absence of, uh, you know, the usual senior leaders. Their name is more of a captain by committee team then one captain, but now with both Patty Burns as well as Russo off the field, it's going to be uh, Gennenbacher, it looks like, to earn that title. It's a nice moment for him and a real, I think, show of respect for you know the leadership he's put in. Absolutely. I mean, he's been, he's a junior on the squad here, 12 of 17 starts as a midfielder and as a defender. So a lot of, a lot of versatility there on the defensive side. Coach Chad really relies on him to kind of step into these new roles and really make, make the most of them. Yeah, and this is another Dame team that figures to have a lot of senior contributors and players that, you know, at some point are going to need to move on from the program. They were the backbone of that team in 2021, but at some point they're going to need to, you know, move on to the professional world, and Notre Dame's going to need to prepare for a future without them and hang that captain's arm man off to a junior, someone that will be here next year no matter what, you know, is a sign of that, I think, and a sign of knowing what things to come are. Foul there in the corner of the field, right in front of the umpire on the sideline there. It looks like Wyatt Borso, I think, was trying to get over uh, Correa on the, and I don't know, I think he was trying to win the ball, but his boot came down in Correa's chest, at least from what we could tell. And it's going to be a yellow card as well. I don't think he's protesting that one much. I think he knows he, you know, shouldn't have done that. I don't think it was intentional regardless, but you know, he knows it's going to be yellow card every time. Once again, a little high press there by Notre Dame. You know, you mentioned it, you mentioned it there, you know, you have players moving on professionally. I mean, under Coach Chad Riley's high, he's had over almost, over almost 20 professional players 
that have moved on, especially in the MLS, he's had 11 selections. I mean, it's something you want to see, especially guys who want to develop, really get better at their craft. I mean, what better way to do it than by a coach who's had that experience? Yeah, and that 2021 team, really the core indicator of, you know, three first round picks, there's no whistles blown there. IUPUI keeps possession regardless. But that 2021 team had three first round super draft picks on, you know, a team that really was built off of senior leadership and graduate student leadership. And I think they looked stronger as a result because of all that experience they had on the pitch. Also Dawson McCartney, who wasn't drafted, and another graduate student contributor on that team really shows the value of having veterans and having players that have been around the block before in a squad and learning something this squad will imitate that perhaps. As we see here, almost a counter play here. My Borso trying to, trying to play it in. Nice little flick touch there, but gets deferred back off of the Jags. Horn there on the, on the deflection, just really getting back, trying to deflect and possibly another Irish goal. Yeah, and that's really alert defending right there because he doesn't just follow the ball. He follows the ball after it gets shot and, you know, makes sure he knows where it's going to be after uh, the shot's had and, you know, does well to keep his eyes on it and eventually clear it out because if he doesn't get in the way of that, that's going to the back of the net. Another Irish corner this time getting sent into the front post almost. Almost two players getting uncovered. Rue with the ball inside the box, really dangerous area. He went to just too many red shirts, too many bodies to try and get a clean shot off. As Ramsey will send it back to Dowd. Dowd sending it out for a Jaguar throw in. Yeah, that could have been a really good chance in her name because, like you said, two players entirely unmarked on the back post. I don't think either team was expecting the ball to make it through as far as it did once the initial contact was made. And both those players had finished their runs or maybe made runs that they weren't anticipating. You know, that's an easy one-on-one -on -one chance with the goalkeeper and you know, a chance that usually gets put away at this level. As Jaguars quickly move out, Gomez trying to make some magic happen with his footwork. Unfortunately, he gets tackled down. Iris received the ball. Another foul created. Baffour quickly playing the ball, but gets Baffour. called back. Thought he had someone there, and he did, but the referee not so in tune with such a quick chance. That was a nice alert play by KK Baffle, who saw the run on the other side of the field and did well to play it on the ground and play it accurately, which is an easy feat. But ultimately, the referee calls it back. Nice tackle there. Of course, Baffle trying to come in there, getting intercepted, and now it's Nieto trying to make some magic work, especially off his right foot. It's going to Kumro. Kumro taking as much time as he can. Haka receiving the ball, but unable to turn up. And now we'll see if he can. Plays it back to Horn. They got another Jaguar offensive trying to see if they can poke and prod. As the ball gets sent up to Haka. Haka trying to get the ball off of his, off of his head there, but getting fought off by the Irish defense. As Baffle receives it, and now he's going to try and quickly turn up field. And a throw in there will keep the play going. Player down now for the Jaguars, and we'll see how quickly it looks like he's up once again. Just a knock. But Jaguars more than happy, I think, to take the break that comes with the player being checked on because Notre Dame was having some nice progress there, some nice chances there with those quick throw ins. They're trying to take advantage of the fact that. Horn was out of the back line on the ground. And Notre Dame now having to kind of, re you know, stop, reset. And Baffour, who was doing all the danger on that wing, looks like is going to be shifting to more of a central role. Burns back in the game now. Looks like it's going to be Burns in the game. Green shifting up to more of a winger role or maybe more of a midfielder role. And then Ento, what a move by Ento though, who is one of the many shifting players. Looks like Baffer is actually going to the midfield, I should say. Nice little ball there. 
Trying to get playing up over the top of the Jaguars, but gets intercepted, and Moorfield will take it. Horn, trying to see if he can set up. And no, and Yoanto really just continuing to put pressure. Pellegrino continuing relentlessly pursuing the ball. And you can see how Green and Burns look as a pairing rather than a, um, a platoon. Usually we see Burns start out at fullback and then Green come in for him. Now they're going to be a partnership with Burns as the fullback, Green as the winger. I want to see how they connect because one of the things Burns was really excelling at in that first shift, in that first 11, was combining play with uh, Vat Baffor or other players and you know getting those one-twos off. They were really good at kind of disabling that IUPUI deep block by doing that. Let's see if he's able to keep that partnership going with a different player on the wing. Perhaps trying to protect Dowd's leg there as he leaves that one short for another player to take it. We saw that a little bit against Indiana as well where Ferguson would take goal kicks and trying to keep legs um, as fresh as possible. Ooh, a little bit of a slip up there from Sebastian Green. She can't quite get his feet locked down and slips out and gets, creates a nice little opportunity for Jaguars to quickly get back in position. Colby in the center trying to put up a passing lane. This ball will get sent up to Gomez, but over the top, and Patty Burns will play it back to Dowd. Let's see if Dowd uses his arm instead of his legs. And there we go. Plays it short once again. Nice build up though from Notre Dame. Bat four getting tackled from behind, just can't quite get on the foot on it. And now Finnegan with the ball, Finnegan and Gomez. This is the dangerous dynamic duo. Gomez looking to shoot off his right, just can't quite get it, but off his left. Close shot there on the inside post. Dow doing a nice job getting, getting there and blocking it off. You know, we said this earlier with Rue. It's uh, really impressive when a striker, you know, doesn't just take the first shot he sees. He waits for the better angle, and that's exactly what Gomez does here. He has a chance to shoot there. He cuts it back instead and gets a better angle out of it. Dow does well to get on the ground and be alert, push it out. I got taking the corner. A lot of Jaguars at the top of the box right now, looking to crash in. Saka sends it in, looking near post. Horn trying to get in front of it, unfortunately gets, gets hit out. Now McColby and Haka will try and settle it back down, take it out. Once again, sends it back into Gomez. Gomez staying off and Finnegan trying to get it, but unfortunately cannot. It has, looks like, Pellegrino there in close contact with the Jacks midfielder, creating a foul and a call. Ooh, Baffour trying to just move his hips there a little bit, get throw off his defender, move him, get him, fake him one way, and then move up the next. Just gets tripped up, causes the foul. Another free possession for the Irish. See Ferguson now in the center back position, looking up. Puts his head down, Check sends it up Patty to Patty Burns. Burns. Burns going way up the left side into the, into the corner. Nice little hit there on Akumro. And now that'll, that'll bring up another Irish corner, this time on the left side. Marins have been lurking on that left touch line for some time. He wanted to make that run, just waiting for the opportunity to open up. And when he does, you can see why. He's so good at controlling that ball. And you know, even when he doesn't have the angle to really get in on goal, create something of it, hits it off a defender, and Notre Dame runs a corner kick result. This bad for will be taking corner kick, special dream, checking in close. Before getting another, getting closer to the box, dishing it out. Going way too high over the top. As Ferguson and Thompson Roberts exchange a few words. Pleasant trees, no doubt. IPI uh, substitution gives Ferguson plenty of time to get back into his center back role. It's usually, though, 
one of the defenders that is most likely to come up when Notre Dame runs a set piece. Obviously a major physical presence in that box, someone that Notre Dame you know, trusts to get their head up if the ball's in the range of the goal, but also leaves the back line a little open if he doesn't get back in time, and that time he had plenty of time to retake his role in the middle of the pitch, middle of the park, I should say. Ramsey just toying around with the ball. A little bit of a high press there by the Jags, but well, it looks like Nieto is going to try and make something happen, especially with Ramsey on his back. A little bit of a physical exchange, and Ramsey will be the better of it. This ball gets sent up to Sebastian Green. Green, seeing a lot of daylight ahead of him, passes it up to Enuento. Fair play being called, McCoby. Bernard McCoby for the Jags once more getting the ball. Patty Burns looking to go over the top. Barely, nearly a really good switch by Patty Burns, but just couldn't clear the last man. Ramsey fighting off Antonio Herrera there. Final 10 minutes of the game. Game's getting a little chippy. Both teams, you know, no, they're only a few minutes away from going home. They want to make sure they're not leaving anything on the field. That time just goes over the back of Ramsey and Ramsey knows, go down there, get the foul and reset. What a so, ball from Ferguson. Wow. Long ball from Ferguson. Looking for Pellegrino, just not quite fast enough to get there, but. Ramsey usually the distributor along the Irish back line. Ferguson looking to say that, hey, I can do that as well and absolutely pings that one. Alert keeping though by Moorefield to get off his line force the issue as opposed to just letting the ball roll and having a potential cutback of result. I was playing it back and forth, just looking to combo once again. As Pellegrino tries to win the ball back. Orson now will get a shot, get a, possibly an opportunity as he settles in front of the box, dishing it out to Patty Burns. Burns on the wide, cutting it in close, gets called. Ooh, but doesn't get the call. Gets caught in as he go as he enters the box. Ref calls fair play, and now this is a golden opportunity for the Jaguars to transition. Yeah, Ooh, unclear but, if that would have been a free kick or a penalty, but regardless, referee says play on. Kidbacher doing a nice job against Finnegan there. Sometimes the standard of what constitutes a foul is uh, changed depending on what the Cox game is. Maybe in a 3 0 game, there's only nine minutes left. The referee was more hesitant than he perhaps would be in other situations to give that. But regardless, Burns definitely thought there was a good deal of contact there. He's not usually one to stay down long, and he was on the ground for more than usual, which is usually zero. The Irish, they have two more non-conference games, excuse me, four more non-conference games as they have a mix of ACC play in the midst of their September month. It's just, the ACC is such a tough division to play in, especially with UNC Virginia all within your, your coastal division for the ACC. As we see here, the Irish trying to get on the front side. Patty Burns on the left gets called offsides just a little bit too far behind Jaguars' de defense backline there. And to your point about the schedule, you know, Notre Dame usually likes to, you know, keep things, you know, always active. And we'll see the replay here as a nice ball in, finds Patty Burns, goes between the lines. Burns trying to bend it, but he was offside regardless. And even that, the shot just a little over the bar. But Notre Dame likes to make sure their schedule, you know, always includes midseason tests, you know, the chance to play a team like Michigan in the middle of ACC play just keeps you that much more sharper. Other oh, divorce, so, ooh, bit of trip up there on Correa. Yeah, Spicer just kept his leg out a little too long. Makes it easy for the trip to happen, and the referee much obliged to give that foul. So neither team is letting up, especially on the physicality side. 
Nieto, oh, <laughs> Nieto just not quite ready for it. Yeah, I don't think Nieto knew that ball was coming from him. Referee, though, blows the play. He wanted more of a stop in between. See another hit. This time on Abanu. I don't know, getting a little shaken up there on the play. Yeah, Bano is kind of all action role in that midfield. I think opens him up for contact sometimes because he really is asked by Notre Dame to play basically everywhere on the pitch. You know, they want him to be both someone that lies deep and, you know, connects play between the forwards and the back line and also someone, you know, that needs to win the ball back as well. You know, he's got a lot of responsibility in the Notre Dame system and as a result, covers a lot of ground and takes a lot of fouls. Ramsey just taking it up into the midfield, just dribbling by himself, passing it to Green. Green trying to quickly snake his way through two midfielders there for the Jaguars, but just can't quite make it through. And it's tired legs, the push becomes a little more enticing, perhaps, so you don't want to try to chase a player from the midfield. You know, just take the foul and live to run another day. Monroe doing a nice job getting behind that ball. As Patty Burns will come in. As we have more substitutions coming in for the Irish. We see here Coach Sin Van Drunen in his second season with IUPUI. You know, he's he's got a huge vision. You know, first after taking the team from 3 and 12, like we said. Took, his took the team from almost the, the 10th position out of 11 in the Horizon League, then flipping it around and taking them to the finals of, the, of their conference tournament. And now, like you said, this season, now it's to win that tournament and make, make the NCAA tournament. And then Jern, I think, knows the magnitude of the job at hand as Burns gonna whip that one in. Nice little play there by Burns. And Roos, and Roo there, oh my goodness. Just a quick little play there in the box. Adding another one for the Irish in the closing minutes. Rue gets on the score sheet again. Just heads up play all around by Notre Dame. Patty Burns picks his head, head up, sees the ball into the box is there. And uh, Rue, poacher's poacher finish right there. He knows you know, that ball is live in the box. And when you get a chance to fire away on goal, you got to take it. Exactly what he does. Notre Dame goes up 4 0. We'll see here on the replay. Burns, an excellent service in the box. It's cleared, but only as far as Rue. And Rue just dispatches that one with ease, you know. For a forward that's, like I said, he's gotten a little better, I think, every year he's been in South Bend. And, you know, that's the chance they're going to rely on him as a more experienced forward to, you know, take every time he gets it. And if he can finish chances like those every chance he gets, Notre Dame's going to be a much better team for it. Great awareness there by Rue just to turn around and just quickly dish it out after it's deflected off of Jaguars defender. Just capitalizing off the opportunity. As the Jags will make some substitutions of their own. Kyle Healy coming back in once more for the game, but here come the Irish once again. Rue looking to make that run on the outside there. And what I was about to say before Rue's goals, I'm really interested to see a little bit of Sean McDowd in the Irish midfield. He got a tough test, so we'll hold that thought right now. As Rue comes in, sends it right into the box. Ooh, but tripped up by Moorfield. That's a penalty. And that'll be a penalty kick. Moorfield is furious. It's a clever touch there. Doesn't try to chip it, doesn't try to go first time. Goes around the goalie, knows the goalie's coming out, lets the goalie go into him, and referee's gonna call that a penalty every day of the week. Could be a hat-trick for Matthew Rue. Well, and Spicer trying to, getting tripped up there by Moorfield, and now Matthew Rue with the PK. We're going in, going to the right side, and it's another goal for Rue. Three for the man tonight. Rue has been on fire. The FIFA song is playing once again. I don't know the name of the song, but I know it's a FIFA song. <laughs> Some great middle school memories on that comes on. And it's a clinical finish. Well dispatched. Keeper goes the wrong way. And 
player like Rue, with the experience he does, you know, he's not missing a chance like that, especially with a hat trick on the line. Does well to, you know, keep it, you know, plenty of pace on it. Doesn't try to get too complex with it. Just keeps it on frame and earns a hat trick as a result. But now, going back to what I've tried to say before, two goals interrupted. I'm interested to see how Sean McDowd performs in the midfield because he came into the game against Indiana and it you know, wasn't an easy test. No Bryce Beno available for that game because of a red card picked up against Clemson in the AC tournament last year. It was McDowd, the freshman, that earned you know really serious minutes against one of the best teams in the country in Indiana and very much looked like he was in place, obviously, today, with Beno back in the lineup, the player in the dream value so highly, uh, McDowd seeing less minutes than against Indiana. But I think it you know says quite a lot about his ability as a player and also his maturity to come in in a game like Indiana, first game of the season against the team of Indiana's caliber and look in place. You know, he wasn't a superstar out there, but you know, when you're playing in a team like Indiana, you know, no one really looks like a superstar. Um, and he looked like he belonged, which is I think as high of praise you can really give a freshman playing his first ever game in the blue and white. Skills are translating to the college college game just so quickly. I mean, he played at club at Portland Timbers Academy and he was one of the, one of the highest ranked in the league. Top 100 recruit, ranked at 92. Speaks to the talent that he's able to bring for the Irish and also amongst a lot of the other talented freshmen that which Chad Riley has been, has been able to recruit. And we see Spicer, McDowd, you know, a lot of freshmen in the game right now, Alex Salvino uh, also subbed in. He's not a freshman, but he was put in. We forgot to mention him. But yeah, no, Notre Dame definitely wanting to give their rookies kind of a run out in a situation like this. We talked about it in the first half as well. You know, right now, Notre Dame's in control. 5 nothing lead. There's three minutes left. They have most of the possession. You know, it's a good chance to kind of see what you've got in your rookies in an environment where you're basically dominating, you know, all the controllables. And Notre Dame can kind of see what they have in these players that, you know, maybe against Indiana it was too high pressure of situation and too, you know, high stakes of situation to let a freshman get a run out. But game like now, you can kind of see what your players have. You can let them be a little more creative, be a little more um, inventive on the ball and without having the risk of a team like Indiana punishing you as a result. And I think Notre Dame's going to, you know, maybe see what they've got and see if any of these players maybe in a different game can come in and be a contributor. You mentioned that. I mean, with all these all these young players coming in. I mean, there's a lot of experience, especially on the defensive side. I mean, Coach, Coach Riley kind of talked about, he's talking about how every single year, every single top team kind of has, has to go through this cycle of going through a, a really strong offensive, offensive side and a really young defensive back. And then once those offensive players move on and defensive players grow, now you're defensive side. It's now for the Irish offense, they'll get another corner. The Irish will send it in to near post. And he's sent away by Brady Horn. Again, and Bacher sending it right back, right back out wide to dish it out. Again, Bacher getting a nice little strike off the post. Ooh. Wow. Again, Bacher is going to be seeing that one when he goes to bed tonight and seeing it probably just an inch more to the right. What a strike. So that's the kind of strike you see on Monday morning on the Sports Center top 10 if it goes in. But ultimately, close only gets you far enough in horseshoes and hand grenades. And that one just a little bit to the left and off the post, the result. I, you wish you could have seen I mean, it's just a dart. If it was halftime, he would have won $50 at Dave's Hot Chicken. But unfortunately, <laughs> this is not the halftime post competition. This is indeed the final two minutes of the match. And Notre Dame does not get a six goal as a result. The Irish will once again be inside the box. A little bit of an interception there by Thompson Roberts. Now will be sent right back up. Plenty of hustle still by IUPUI. They know that you know, even though this game, barring the greatest comeback in college soccer history, is out of hand, you know, it's not over yet, and they still want to make sure they don't leave anything out in that field, and they'll be running until the final second. Let's get to the final minute here, like you said. Harris just really been having a leg up all game. He'll get sent in, trying to get it right over the far post. Ooh, almost, almost got a leg on it, but gets sent back in. Dowd. Late, late corner kick for the Jaguars. 
This might be the last play. Race against the clock. The last play of possession here for the Jags. Camrose sending it right back into the center, center of the box. It's a nice little shot. We'll go wide right. And that'll be the Irish winning it 5-0. It's the IPUI Jaguars.